people singing. It, it gets even more funner that way. Because it's fun. It's like a duet. <laughs> you know Ellen's car because the license plate says... Oh, fun to sing. <laughs> but, but shorter. <laughs> This is really easy. If you want to join in on the chorus, it's super simple. Hello. Ow. Like me for more than my mind. Or you can make up any melody around that general area. There were two girls who looked a lot the same. They had eyelashes that looked like a hula skirt made of coal. They blinked. Once they were happy. Twice they were bored. Three times it was a comedy of manners. They had a husky voice. Where's the apple? I don't know. <laughs> Stephen Wright was hysterical. They knew many show tunes by heart. One would burst into all that jazz. Then she'd nod and the other would launch into the ladies who lunch. And sometimes, like 80 now, he's so brilliant. Yay! Sometimes, they both love Kubrick. They both love Truffaut. One could quote from Dr. Strangelove. One could quote from the 400 Blows. They stayed up all night watching All About Eve, Mildred Pierce, Annie Hall, and Lolita over and over. One wore rouge, one just blushed. One wore lipstick, one bitter lip. It looked like they wore glasses, but really it was a telescope. The astronomy was tangible. Both could fly, it was matter of fact. They were night owls, they like creme brulee, and they could fly. They mostly walked, they weren't flaunters. They studied the Renaissance, they saw themselves writing sonnets and painting on ceilings. They thought the body was 90% water and 10% confetti. Of course, they should celebrate. Of course, they should swim. They kept calendars from every year the world had been breathing. They knew where the first tear had been shed, when the first apple had fallen far from the tree. They went into melancholy as deeply as joy. They memorized scenes from a streetcar named Desire, death of a salesman and the Iceman Comet. Then suddenly it was Gidget movies, American bandstand in Greece. They wanted a bite from each world. Your singing part is here. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> like, la, la, like me for more than
the happy one looks pathos in the eye as if she knew which horse would grin at the racetrack. Men stuck to her like she had a flying paper ass. <laughs> she talked about Cicero and physics and after half an hour looked up for his hypothesis. All he said was your clothes all for mine. She gulped. She began speaking about the use of cinematography in days of heaven, rhapsodizing on magic hour technique. He said, do you believe in giving head or you're not that sort of girl? What kind of girl was she? She wouldn't lie down and play dumb. She was about to talk about allegory. Suddenly the somber girl said, you thought life would be a picnic. Too many carrots have been brought your way, but your face says it all. The formerly happy girl said, what has life been like for you? Suddenly, the somber girl is trading witty quips with the same guy. They look blissful. They are talking of music, humming to each other, laughing. Formerly happy said, when does he interrupt to proposition you? Somber says, he never does. No matter how happy he is with me, he's never that happy if you know what I mean. Then they simultaneously squeal, you've got it better than me. Happy said, it's a guy's world. Somber said, it's a mad world too. Their anger gradually dissipated by the sheer absurdity. Suddenly, they looked identical. Absolutely the same. Radiant, defiant, and everything in between. <laughs>